I don't think so. Not today. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I am great. And today I am working on cleaning up this very, very, very sad and miserable Phalaenopsis. Got all my equipment laid out here. Equipment, equipment, rubbing alcohol, Q-tips, Q-tips a brand, cotton swabs, some soapy water, gloves, cutting supplies, a lighter for sterilization. And let's explain what's going on here. So, this is Phalaenopsis fuller sunset, which is one of my favorite fowls, only because it just blooms absolutely non-stop. And it's a very vigorous grower. I've had two of these. One of them I got, I don't know, a year and a half ago from Orchids by Hauserman. I ended up giving that one away because somebody really liked it and I had two. And then I've had this one for, I don't know, maybe four or five years. It's grown an awful lot and it's also from Hauserman. So there are a few different problems here. One, it's just in need of a repot. The sphagnum has gone bad. It's nasty. There's lots of old roots that need to be cleaned out that are just falling apart in here. And the main issue, however, is that this plant is absolutely infested with mealybugs. So if you have been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I have been battling mealybugs for like two or two and a half years now, all from one nasty clearance plant I brought home from Home Depot. And it's got a lot better last summer, but they're coming back with a vengeance. Not everywhere, they're kind of in selective areas, but I have to stay on top of it. So uh, this fowl right here, last week I didn't see any mealybugs on it. This week, covered. So I've already removed the ones that were up here on this keiki. I really, really, really want to do my best to protect this keiki. It has a spike on it and it has two roots. You generally don't like to pull a keiki off until they have at least three roots. So I went ahead and used the alcohol and dabbed the few off that were up there and then I have wrapped the roots in a damp paper towel to help keep it moist because where I am where I'm sitting the circulation fans kind of hitting this a little bit and I don't want to dry it out. Uh, mealybugs typically lay their eggs below the soil they hatch scurry up the plant so removing them from the below the roots down here in the potting medium is going to be more difficult so I'm going to completely unpot this. First, I am going to go ahead and cut the spikes off of this. This has one spike with buds. It has another back here and another right here. So it has three spikes on it. Like I said, this thing's pretty much always blooming. Now I'm going to leave this main spike right there because it is supporting this keiki. But I'm going to cut everything else off. I want it to devote its energy to putting out new roots since it's going to be repotted and to keeping this cakey growing. To do that, I'm gonna go ahead and use these clippers here. I got them nice and hot. Just make sure they're sterile. I've already rubbed these down with rubbing alcohol. I'm running this flame through here for a while. So this is gonna take a minute. And then I'm gonna quickly cut those off. The reason I'm flaming this is because it will help to kind of carterize the cut help seal it up a little bit to help prevent diseases and infections and whatnot from getting in there. Also, this is much more effective to be done if you're actually using a torch, but my torch is out of fuel, so gotta do what you gotta do. Come in here and get these cut off. I'm gonna cut it off as close as possible. There we go. So that one's cut. This is an old one that can be cut down here. Like so. This one's also rather old. It can go. All right, that's gone. Let's hope it didn't have any mealybugs on it. And now this guy right here. Oh, oh, I forgot one. And you can see here, whoa, if it would focus, you would be able to see here. I mean, these are covered, covered in mealybugs. So I need to make sure that I've contained everything that I cut off here. Yeah, okay. Made those cuts gonna leave them be I could dab some cinnamon on the ends there to seal it up but this guy's gonna be going through a little bit more stuff first so now that that's done I'm going to go ahead and spot remove any mealybugs that I see and to do that I'm just using isopropyl with some rubbing alcohol just gonna take that filling this little reservoir overfilling it whoops that's fine no big deal I'm going to use these cotton swabs. And I do usually like to take the tip of the cotton swab, kind of loosen it up a little bit so that you have 
this sort of fluffy point coming out of it because it just makes it a little bit easier to kind of get in there and scrape them off. Just give this a nice soak like so. And I come in here and dab. So what the rubbing alcohol is doing is it's removing the waxy coating from the mealybugs. Mealybugs have a coating on them that is problematic because it makes it really hard to kill them with insecticides. It's like they have this film on them that repels liquids. Another option would be DE powder, diatomaceous earth. Works very well. Mealybugs are kind of slow, so I've noticed that takes a little bit longer, but I'm probably going to end up using some of that on here as well. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and go through and try and get off everything that I can see with the alcohol swab. Important when doing this to make sure that you get to the undersides of the leaves because that's where they like to hang out. Well, there are either two more spikes or two roots popping up down there. I said this is an extremely vigorous orchid. Yeah, so see here? Maybe not. So you can see inside these crevices where these guys are hanging out. And I am trying to be careful to not get the alcohol on the roots because it's desiccating. So, you know, that's not great for the roots. It's also not fantastic for the leaves either. But I am going to go through here and give this a really big soak in just a minute when I'm done with this in a good rinse. This is not in focus, I'm sorry. And that's weird. There's like a piece of glass or something down here. I wonder what that is. I can find some pliers. What is that? You see what I'm talking about? I think I might need to use tweezers for this. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Okay, I found some tweezers. Now, I don't know if you guys can even see what's going on down there, so let me get some better light. There we go, you see that? There's like a shard of glass or something down in here. I have no idea what that would be from. I'm doing this kind of blindly. So I can't really see what I'm doing. I think part of it broke off. Nope. There we go. That is just a shard of glass. I don't know why there's a piece of glass inside my orchid. That's pretty weird. Yeah, I don't know. The only thing I can figure there is maybe... Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. Glass doesn't break that often around here. So I'm not sure what that's from. During the summer, this sits outside on my little tiki bar. There's glassware there, but I don't remember any glasses breaking. So... Uh, who knows, but I'm gonna go through here, remove the rest of the mealies that I can see, and then unpot this, so I'll be right back. That's, that's enough of that. This thing is, it, there's so many on here, it is extremely unlikely that I'm gonna be able to remove all of them by hand, but I am going to soak this for a very long time. Like, like I'm just gonna, it's going in there for a while. I'm gonna swish it around. The mealybugs can't swim, so that'll help get them off and the fish can eat the mealybugs, and the residual alcohol shouldn't hurt them, especially because I have carbon back there in the filter to remove it, so that shouldn't be a big deal. Now, whatever's going on in here might be kind of nasty. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, well, hey, actually, not quite as disgusting as I thought it would be, but that's still, still pretty gross. This is one of the problems with sagging. You really have to stay on top of changing it out. I went a little while, and uh, yeah, this pot is going to be garbage. Not reusing that. All right, so to get that moss off of the roots, I'm gonna soak it in this glass bowl, and then I'm going to take that bag and throw it away. Yep, this is full of mealybugs. Do not want that around. Absolutely not. I will recycle the pot. All right, then I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this up with some water. I'm going to give it a while to soak. The more time it has to soak, chances are, ugh, chances are the better everything is going to come off the roots. See this? Look at that. That fell off, and look at what's happening over here. See that? Nope. I don't think so. Not today. This is just soapy water. It's not likely to kill them. Well, if they're drenched like that, it might. And who knows how many others got loose. 
Ugh. Well, that was a big, big mess up. I thought that that piece was in the bag with everything else. That's why I used the bag to help contain things. Let's come back here and get this cleaned up and taken care of. All right, now that I've gone through and I have this laying in the bowl at an angle, I can see the undersides of the leaves a little bit better so I can go through and remove more mealy bugs. Odds of me getting every single one of these by hand, are, uh, that's really probably not gonna happen. I'd say it's worthwhile to do my best to get in here and try and get as many of the adults that I can see because it's only going to help, it's not going to hurt. Yeah, there's a little millipede. This whole thing is just full of, full of critters. That's why I have a glove on, because there's bugs everywhere. And then now that it's been soaking for a while, I can go in here and start to break this moss up and try and free the roots. Probably going to take a little while. Okay, I got all the moss out, and I did go ahead and I took this inside and ran it under the sink, very high pressure making sure to get inside of all the different nooks and crannies that are in there to help blast the mealybugs out. And as a last resort, I'm going through just to be safe with the cotton swab and I'm dabbing it inside some of those nooks and crannies where I'm not confident that the water was able to get out the mealybugs. So that'll help dry them up. And then when I give this another rinse, it'll hopefully flush them out. So now that that's all done, I can look at this and I can look at these roots and say, eh, this isn't fantastic, but it does have two pretty decent sized aerial roots. And then on the inside, there's either more flower buds popping out or their roots. I don't know. They're too small to tell just yet. So the yellow roots. Now, oh, there's still some moss in there. It's kind of hard to get all of the moss out. The yellow roots are not necessarily dead. If they're still firm, they're probably okay. So they're just not photosynthesized. There's no chlorophyll in them. Like the aerial roots up here have the green in them. There's chlorophyll in here. They're photosynthesizing. These inner roots, not quite as much. So just because they're yellow doesn't mean they're rotten, but I still like to go through, give them a squeeze to find out. However, up here, these roots are no good. They need to go. I'm going to go through here and cut out all the dead roots with my sterilized snippers. Even up here, I'm going to cut it just a bit above there. Nope, I'm cutting it on the green. I don't want that rot spreading into the root. Get in here, I'm gonna cut as much of it out as I can. Okay, so now that that's done, as I was doing this, I'm still seeing some spots up here where those mealies are. They'll create these cottony type nests, and you really have to go in there and get the whole thing out, because if you don't, there's usually a whole bunch living inside of there. So you want to get all that cottony material off of the orchid. Or I try my best to. And I think I'm actually going to go ahead and maybe take off these lower leaves. They're starting to yellow. They're not really getting any light. So really what's left of the plant as far as the roots go, energy is being devoted to trying to keep these alive. And they're not really doing much to help keep the plant alive. So uh, it might make sense to just go ahead and snip those off. All right, so I went in there, did all that fun stuff, and I'm still finding a lot of mealybugs. So what I decided on is I'm not going to repot this right now. You know, I have all this stuff removed. I think I removed about four leaves. There are so many open wounds now from all the cuts and whatnot. I don't, that I don't really want to be watering this with my aquaponics water right now either. So for right now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to put it in this vase and I'll keep a little bit of water in the bottom to help keep the humidity up and this way it's much more easy for me to get in here and see why won't you focus focus I'm gonna keep it in that vase I'm gonna keep it inside away from my other plants and I'm gonna be watching it daily and going through and dabbing off those mealies as much as I can until I would say a few weeks pass that I'm not seeing any more on here so another option I have and I may end up doing this is I may go ahead and once it seems like it's healed up a little bit more, I might go ahead and put this in a plastic bag, like a large trash bag with some DE powder, that diatomaceous earth and give it a good shake. I don't want to do that with that cakey up here. That's part of the reason I'm not just doing that as it is. If the cakey weren't there, I would go ahead and do that. But I think that this is too fragile to just have it toss around a bag. So I want to go ahead and see if I can get a little bit more growth out of the roots on that cakey, hopefully over the next couple weeks. And then I'm, go I'm actually going to do that regardless, just to be safe. That DE powder is going to uh, basically 
shreds the mealybugs from the inside out. Which I feel kind of bad about. I actually do not enjoy going through and killing these guys. I feel like a murderer. They're cute. They're fluffy. They're just doing their thing, living their lives, and then I come along and just start murdering them. Not really happy about doing that. Overall, this is an improvement. I'm going to go ahead and give the leaves another clean here with some soapy water. This is, I have very hard tap water. This is what's left from my tap water. So, soapy water, like so. It's a nice, good spray. I let it sit for a second. You don't really need to, but I don't put much soap in the water as it is. And then I just come in here and wipe it off more thoroughly than what you're seeing right now when I'm using both hands. It works a little bit better. Another thing I'm going to do is I am going to take a little piece of paper towel crumble it up and stuff it down into the crown here because a lot of moisture has been getting in there today and I don't want any type of rot to happen. Phalaenopsis are really prone to getting rot or to rotting out in the middle when water sits in there. So I am going to do that. I guess I may as well just do it right now. Just going to kind of squeeze that down in there but not too tight because I don't want to mess up the new growth that's coming up there out of the apex. Oh, and I don't think I finished without the DE powder. I'll put it in a bag, I'll shake it up, and I'll probably leave it in that bag for maybe up to a week. I'll use a white bag so some light can get in there. If I can find a clear bag that's big enough, I'll use that. But that will hopefully help eradicate the problem, except for any eggs that might be in there. That's why it's going to remain kind of like this for a while. Once it's healed up more, I may even end up doing this in like an aquaculture situation. That's it. Sorry, everything's so long and winded. It's just how I do things. Also, if you know any mealybug products out there that are effective on mealybugs and on orchids, let me know because I feel like I've tried just about everything under the sun and they're not working. The things that do work on the mealybugs tend to kind of kill the orchids, so that's not going to work here. But I can't just keep doing this with all of my plants. It's a nightmare. It's very exhausting. So comment down below and let me know. Or comment down below just to say hi. It's fun talking to y'all. Oh, and I don't want to forget, I am going to go through here and sterilize this entire surface with a dilute bleach. I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes, clean it off, dry it off. And uh, yes, I'm aware there is a magnesium deficiency happening here. It's all right. I mean, with everything else going on with the orchid, why not throw a deficiency in there, right? And don't forget to like the video. It helps a lot. Subscribe as well. I upload multiple times a week. Hope everybody's doing well. And as always, everybody, keep on growing.